Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, Q&A. We're going to be talking walkthroughs. We're going to be talking media preparation. We're going to be talking, what do you call your coach? Coach last name? Coach first name? Just by the first name? When does that change? What does all go into that? That's a good question. So I'm excited. Let's dive into it, see where we end up. Welcome to the QB School. All right, first question up, Scott Green. Can you explain what goes on during a walkthrough practice? Appreciate the time and effort. The school is incredible. Appreciate it, Scott. Absolutely. So walkthroughs are a little different at every level. In the NFL, you do a lot of walkthroughs. In fact, even more walkthroughs now since I've been out of the league with the way that they've had different constraints about practices, OTAs, training camp, all of those things. But in essence, I always approach walkthroughs is very similar to a practice. Now, they're basically different at every organization, but I think for the most part, most teams in the league basically use it as another extension of practice. And what I mean by that is not everyone goes the same tempo. It's not necessarily a walkthrough per se. It might be full speed for certain guys. Some guys might do jog throughs. Some quarterbacks might want wide receivers running full speed. But in essence, there's a script just like there's a script at every practice. So you'll know exactly what the plays are. And quarterbacks kind of have different roles at different organizations. Some places I've been where walkthroughs are on air or on bags or on dummies. And then sometimes, most times, a scout team services is kind of the walkthrough defense. And so oftentimes the quarterbacks are the two safeties, the backup quarterbacks. So really, you don't get those great reps. And that's kind of why a starter gets all the reps in the NFL. But the backups usually play kind of a safeties or DBs or linebackers or some sort of service element on the scout look team. But you're really running, the majority of them are running just plays that they can't get to in a practice. Now, some teams, especially at lower levels, like for instance, when we use walkthroughs at the high school level, oftentimes we'll have the same script that we will use at practice will be the script that we use at walkthroughs because there's smaller volume of plays in general. But in the league, you're often not going to be able to run every play full speed in a practice during the course of the week of preparation. So you coaches will insert those into the walkthrough script. So then basically you walk through them. So they think, oh, that's good enough. That's the same thing as a rep. And really it is the same thing as a rep. You know, you might not get it full speed, but most teams go out there and usually have their wide receivers run around. The quarterback makes the throw. Now it's not on a live defense or anything like that, but they're still great reps because you get to visually see it. You get to feel the space, the throw, the tempo, all of those things. That, that I always say are their great reps. And sometimes they're better reps than a kind of a service defense look because those guys aren't always in your best interest as far as doing exactly what the defensive card or defensive opponent will do. They're out there working on their craft. It's a more competitive situation in practice, but it's not necessarily a great look all the time. And so those walkthrough reps are really important. So for me, it was always a way to kind of, you get a chance to service if you're not the guy, but if you are playing, they are great reps to be able to, play plays that you might not get to in practice. And so let's just hypothetically say you have a half hour walkthrough the morning in an NFL, like normal Wednesday, where you just installed a whole normal down and distance game plan for that week. So you're going to go out there and you're going to rep a lot of those plays that you know, you're not going to get to in practice because practice will be scripted and it'll be a different script than the walkthrough. So I'm, I'm just off the top of my head. Let's say the walkthrough is 30 minutes. Most teams will have 30 plays in there. And then most coaches, I remember Norv Turner, he was notorious for this. He would add like five plays at the start of a walkthrough or during the morning after the script is already made. He'd be like, I want to run. Let's run this. Let's run that. And you, you, they're, they're added on at the back or normally to say that they keep it at 30 plays. They'll just add it on to the front, like a zero rep, a negative one rep, a negative two rep, a negative three rep, a one A rep, a one B rep, all those kind of coaches tricks to make sure that it's still only 30 plays but they get a lot more plays in, in during the walkthrough. And really it's kind of a, it depends every organization. This is a thing that I always thought was weird because I went to so many different teams. Every organizational tempo is different. What I mean by that is some teams will have the wide receivers run full speed out there. Like they, they get a chance to kind of jog through the first couple ones, but they expect them to run and the quarterbacks to go out there and throw it. Then I've been around other quarterbacks who don't want to throw don't want to want to rest their arm or can't get warmed up or, you know, have a stiff back or something that they can't go out there and go full speed. So it's a much more slowed down tempo. And so all those things kind of change by organization, change by time of year, change by where you're doing it. You know, are you inside? Are you outside? Is it freezing? Is it wet? You know, all those things kind of are constraints to what the walkthrough looks like. But for me, it's always more of a mental thing. So it's one thing to watch film, I think as a quarterback or as anybody, 
and you're always watching it from like the bird's eye perspective, unless you have like access to VR. But this idea that in a walkthrough, you are at eye level. That's the level you're going to be playing at. So the things that you're going to be seeing, middle field open, middle field close, rotation, pressure coming, where you're looking for certain concepts, what concepts look like is the spacing of them. Those are great walkthrough reps. And so the spacing of it, all of those things I think are really important. I think walkthrough reps are invaluable. I think it really, it shows a level of professionalism and kind of preparation that the teams that do it well consistently are kind of high executing teams, usually in my opinion. I've also been around, another thing about walkthroughs is usually when you travel, you will uh, go do a walkthrough depending on when you get in, either at the stadium or at the hotel or, you know, if you don't have access to the stadium at like a local high school, somewhere, a parking lot, you'll do a walkthrough. Well, I've been around some coaches that are so paranoid that they will purposely line up in the wrong formations all the time. Now, paranoid for the right reasons, right? I was I had Mike Martz as a offense coordinator multiple times while the Patriots watched their, you know, filmed their walkthroughs before the Super Bowl. So, I mean, those things exist. There's a reason to be paranoid, but it was just funny to be in the huddle, be like, all right, this is going to be our first couple calls of the game. Go out, line up, and line up totally on purpose in the wrong formation. You know, so it's it's one of those things where it depends on the circumstances, what you're going to get, the quality of the walkthrough. But as far as the purpose of them, I love the idea of mental reps through eye level, different than watching film, different than the bird's eye view, macro kind of picture. This is eye level, spacing, tempo, rhythm, all of those things that you really need to play quarterback wise to play well consistently. Walkthroughs are so important. I love to utilize them as a coach, love them as a player, and and think that they're invaluable really for high executing, well performed teams in, the, in really crunch moments because you just don't get an opportunity to practice every play that you're going to run in the game. You just, I, my experience is you can't, you don't. And so walkthroughs are a great kind of bridge to be able to say, hey, we covered this, we rep this, you know where to line up, you know what to do. We might not have done it full speed, but we still prepared and have an opportunity to do it successful when it matters. So great question. Thanks for asking. Next question, gold coins, 1190. I'm curious if you could do a video about where you taught, were you taught to answer questions post game, win or lose. I've been curious if it was a set standard or if it varies from team to team. Also love your work. Appreciate it. Gold. Yeah. So. Yes, the answer to both of those is you are taught and it does vary from team to team. Most teams, especially in training camp off season, will bring in some sort of media consultant, PR specialist to kind of help players, especially new younger players as far as what to answer, that kind of like team centric answer that everybody gives. But beyond that, it very usually kind of varies by the individual head coach. The head coach usually sets the tempo of that stuff. So it's either kind of close to the vest, think Patriots, or it's kind of you know, be yourself kind of a vibe that you think like Marvin Lewis and Ron Rivera, you know, interesting, both those guys aren't there anymore, but you know, it varies by the head coach usually mirrors the head coach's approach to the media and, and whether they embrace it or they kind of keep him at a distance as far as what the team falls into line. I think most quarterbacks learn pretty early that you get all the blame win or lose. And so you deflect it when you win, you spread it around, you make the bigs feel really good. You make everybody in the organization understand their value and their worth. And then when it doesn't go your way, you own it because that's part of the deal. You want to play quarterback, you know that you're the decision maker. You touch the ball every play. You win or lose, the ball's it's often going to come down to, to your performance. So I think it's pretty intuitive and instilled pretty early that quarterbacks are usually pretty good about understanding that, hey, I didn't play well. I can play better. Give us a chance to win. You know, I'm, for one, am, am someone that really believes that pronouns are revealing and what I mean by that is what you use, you know, are you an I guy? Are you, I got to do this. I, I could have done this, blah, blah, blah. Like, or are you a, Hey, we, we need to play better. We can do it better. I can do it better. You know, those type of things that I always thought pronouns are very revealing. I know I hijacked that from someone. I didn't come up with that myself, but I, I've kind of learned by that and taught and think about it like that. So really important from the quarterback perspective to when you, you know, take an L, you own it. I got to play better. I can help lead this team to, to a more consistent level. And then when you win, it's all about us. We did this great. We did that. Not, Hey, I had a great day. I'm a baller. None of that. You know, you learn pretty early that, Hey, this is about us. It's a team sport. If you wanted to do an individual thing, you know, you'd be playing golf or playing tennis. So great question. John Max highlights. How would you address your coach in the Prius first game? Not sure what Prius is there first game or coach last name or any other name you call them. 
John, this is a good question. I remember struggling with this a little bit, not so much early. Early for me growing up, it was always coach last name. But, you know, nowadays, especially when you're a pro, I think things change a little bit. And so really it's just an evolution of the individual. So sometimes a coach will say, hey, call me John, call me Bill, whatever. And then it makes it pretty easy right out the gate. But to the, way, the way that I was explained, the way that I was explained, the way that it was explained to me was that, hey, we're colleagues now. We're professionals. You know, you don't call a colleague, you know, Mr. So-and-so. It's, hey, Bob, hey, Bill, hey, you know, Rebecca, hey, Sarah, you know, et cetera. It's, it's first name basis. And so I think that's kind of the element at the pro level. I think it's a little bit different at the collegiate level. I'm not sure if it's for the right reasons. You know, I'll let that lie for this video. But the idea that it's like some like respect thing, like, oh, you know, you show respect to the coach, I think is an outdated thing. I think coach is an honorary title. It's a respected title. But like, do I get hung up on it? No, I like, I don't care. Like, w whatever. It's more about the relationship, the teaching, those type of things, you know. But I think at the pro level, it's colleagues. You know, at the lower levels, it's there's a sign of respect. There's a sign of authority, I think, that is, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. That's the reality of it. So the coach, you know, term is a little bit more coach, whatever last name is a little bit more normal than just kind of, hey, what's up, Bob? You know, what's up, Bill? You know, there's a, a, that kind of line with an adolescent or a young person that I think, you know, when you're teaching respect that in most communities and cultures is kind of still a little frowned upon. So I don't have a good answer. I just know that I remember being a little weird using people's first names when I got to the NFL and it took a little bit of time, but once it was explained to me like, hey, we're colleagues, hey, we're trying to work together to win games, it made it a little bit easier, a little bit more natural to call people by their first name. So great question. All right, that's a wrap. Hopefully you enjoyed the Q&A. Let me know any other questions you wanna see. I'll try to get to as many as I can. I appreciate the support of the channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I appreciate it. See you next time.